Good evening, everyone. Let's begin in prayer. God, our creator, when you speak, there is light and life. Fill us with your Holy Spirit so that we may listen to one another. Speak the truth in love and bear much fruit in the service of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go before us, O Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour, and assist us with your continual help that in all works, begun, continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, welcome to our AGM in both parts. Uh, tonight, we are. the only things that are missing are the annual dinner that, well, you had that at home. Um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Some of you didn't have it at home. I think you had it as a sort of a post-putt-putt thing. Does that sound right? And it was good? Good. Let me tell you about what we're going to do tonight when this works which is some time other than now. Okay. What we're going to be doing tonight, we're going to be following this... We're going to be making the choices for elections. Now, let me explain that. There is a little thing we have to do about choosing how many parish councillors and how many wardens we have. And according to the official, uh, this is the order you're supposed to do your AGM in, it happens just before you choose those people, which makes it very tricky if, you know, you choose a bigger number or... Yeah... So we're going to do that first, so we've got a little bit of time to actually react, respond to what we choose. We're then going to hear our reports, uh, during which the budget for 2021 will be put through, and then we'll be make, doing our elections and appointments. Does that sound okay? I don't know what you do if it's not. That's by the canons, except for me throwing the choices up to the beginning, so you can't argue. Sorry. Let me just take you through these choices for elections. There are two choices you have to make and one further choice that you are going to have to make because of uh, numbers of nominations. So we need to choose the number of wardens, that being either three or two. If you choose three wardens, this body appoints two of them. If you choose two wardens, this body only appoints one. And I suspect both of our current wardens may scream. But there you go. Uh, you can choose either of those. We need to choose the number of parish councillors and it has to be divisible by three because this, for every, in every three, this body appoints two, I appoint one. Does that make sense? So I appoint a third of and you appoint two thirds of, so your appointees always outnumber mine two to one. Make sense? So you will need to come up with a number and then later we will appoint two-thirds of that number. And you can see I've put up there that currently we have two nominations for wardens um, and we have six nominations for uh, parish councillors. So if you decided you wanted to go, for instance, with 15 parish councillors, uh, that means this body appoints 10, which means before the end of the night we've got to come up with four more. Does that make sense? Complicated, I know, this whole thirds thing, but there you go. Third thing is parish nominators. We have received one nominator nomination. That just does my head in a little bit. So we are required to have three, nomination, three nominators. Now, the job of a parish nominator is they choose my replacement when I get hit on the, by a bus on the way home. I'm not planning on doing that, but just in case I do... That person has to, that those three people pick the replacement. Now, this is not a, the, at the AGM, the parish may. This is at the AGM, the parish must. So by the end of tonight, we have to have three nominators, not one. So I'm just throwing that out there because at the moment we've just got one. This is why I threw it out to you early. You now have time to think about it, consider it, pray about it, talk about it, consider some. Uh, potential proposals. So, I am looking for somebody who would like to move. 
that first motion that the number of church wardens be and then put a number next to it? You want only two wardens? So we'll have an election tonight and only two people will be appointed uh, to share the work between them. Uh, Do we have a seconder for that? There is a seconder? Any discussion on that motion? Earl. I don't know how you second a comment, but there you go. (laughs) All right, well, I will... The motion has been put. I will therefore put the motion that the number of church wardens be two. Those in favour say aye. Aye. Those those against no. No. It is lost. Do we have another motion? Rebecca. Do we have a seconder for that one? Yes, Penny Miles got in first. Any discussion on that one that we haven't had already? I put the motion. Those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. It is carried. We have three wardens, which means we'll be appointing two later in the evening. Uh, The number of parish councillors... I believe, Hugh, you kind of foreshadowed there was a motion for this one, that the number of parish councillors be six. Again, that means we will have an election and because we have six nominations, so it will mean only four of them get elected tonight. Um, Do we have a seconder for that? Terry, thank you. Any discussion on that? Ross. Okay. Any other comments? Peter, can I just clarify? We currently have six nominations. That's the six. That's six of nine. It, it's a, six. Can we get the mic rolling? People can't hear. Um, so the question was if we've currently got six nominations. Does that include the three that you would pick? Does that include the three that I would pick? No. No, so that would mean that the total would be not the total of six would mean this body would appoint four, and I would appoint two. But if we chose nine, we would choose six, and, and I would choose three. Now, it it should it it does need to be said. Parish council is not a six-person body or a nine-person body. Can I have the next slide? Which I think has the makeup of parish council. Parish council is made up of the rector, the community chaplain, the church wardens. The Synod representatives, uh, which are Earl and David, the parish nominators, who we don't have yet, uh, the parish treasurer, and the number elected by this body. Now, uh, a lot of those get a little bit of duplication. Uh, I happen to know that the parish treasurer has been nominated for parish council, which is not an unusual thing at all. Um, I also happen to know that uh, the person nominated for parish nominator also holds a nomination for uh, church warden and is one of the synod representatives and is not David Hampson. (laughs) So sometimes there is a job held by... multiple jobs held by the same person. Daniel. It was nine last year, so six plus three. 
Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Go for it. The question was how many were elected last year? And the answer was nine. That's that can th those things we don't want to lock into. Yep. Yeah. Ross has already said it is a big task sometimes leading the church and having a decent body of councillors who can be called upon to take on the various tasks is very important. Any further discussion? Sorry, can, can we get the um, mic? Yep. Just clarifying, we did we elected nine last year, but we ended. We've, we've had three pull out across the year? Yes. Yes. So which is the other, yeah, I don't know whether that's a pro or against um, for six or nine, but just a comment. Yeah. I'm not sure that the people withdrew because of numbers. No, no, no. no. But, but if we... If we, if we have a few... We had six and we lose three throughout the year. But then numbers are very small council. Mm. Yeah. All right, well, the motion has, if, if there's no further comments, the motion has been put, so I move the motion. Uh, clarification, what's the motion we're voting? The motion is to vote for six representatives. A total count. Total count of six, which means appointing, electing four tonight. Those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. 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 No's have it. It is lost. Do I have another motion? Ross. Is there anybody who's going to second that motion? Anne Milton is going to second that motion. Do we have anybody who wants to add to the discussion? I think it's fairly well discussed. I will therefore put the motion. Those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. It is agreed. So we are pointing six tonight. Um, finally, just a reminder, we do need to come up with two more names as parish nominators. That's for your thinking pleasure as we proceed. Okay, back to our agenda, which I think was that second slide. There we go. So we move from choices for elections to reports, uh, and uh, we come to my report. What do I want? I want this thing. That's what I want. Oh, no, I'm going to use, my, I'm going to use this clicker. Um, for most of the stuff we've talked about in terms of the plans for 2021 I'm, that I'd normally do at this meeting, I actually deliberately did that in my sermon on the 31st of January, and I commend it to your viewing pleasure and commend it to your enjoyment of an earlier evening. Does that sound okay? You've seen my report... The only things I did want to add, there were some questions that came since the reports came out that I think are worthy of hearing the answers to. And one was to asking what happened in our congregation over the live streaming time and since. So I've asked Dave to put together some statistics about the live streaming and I've got the ones that we've got from here and uh, I'll show you where our statistics went. So in terms of the live stream, um, you can see there, 4,041 watched hours, uh, 15,217 views and 143 subscribers. Probably the last one is the one that is the most interesting in that, although the hours watched is relevant because anybody can click on a link, but the question is, did they actually stick around and watch the service? Was it a two-second connection or was it a, a full service link? So that one's... So to give you an idea how these worked out over the weeks, um, between while we were in lockdown, that's while we were pre-recording the services on a Thursday and then uh, televising, then putting them out on a Sunday, and everybody connected together because we were all locked in our houses. We had, um, on average, 263 people connecting per week. Now it's worth saying that's 260. It's it's a weird number because it's the number who clicked on to say they wanted to watch it. 
not necessarily the number of people who are watching it. If you were in a household of six people and one person clicks on it, that could be one click for six people. On the other hand, somebody might sit there on their phone and go, I'm going to, no, that's too small. And they put that down and they connect on something else that's got a bigger screen. That's now two views for one person. So you can see why the statistics are a little bit rubbery. We don't have precise statistics here. The more significant one really is the average dot watched hours per week because that'll give you, a, as I say, the actual length of people watching. Uh, it's an encouraging figure. What it meant was we had more people connecting with our live stream service than we had on average on a normal Sunday by a significant margin. However the rubbery figures work out, it does point to a lot more people connecting than we would normally have on a Sunday, which is very encouraging. When, we, when the restrictions eased, and you might remember we came back to running the services live and we had no official congregation, sometimes we had a home group who would come and be part of sort of a, dare I say, a studio audience. Um, you know, filmed in front of a live studio audience kind of thing. Uh, so only a small number of people were allowed to connect each week. Uh, in, in person. So we still had, you, you will see, although the average viewers per week drops markedly, the average watched hours per week doesn't drop nearly as much. It does drop uh, because some people are actually coming and connecting uh, in the building. Then from November the 1st, uh, when we actually met as a congregation on Sunday, uh, the, we still have... Uh, reasonable number of people uh, connecting with our, our live stream things during the week and, uh, and, and a fair bit of watching of things. So there are a number of people who continue to connect and we can, we can put names to some of them. Alan Hill has been at church every week. It's been brilliant, as he could never have been before. And it's been wonderful to be able to have people who've been isolated, even now that we're back together, for most of us, they are still able to join in and participate in our Sunday services. In terms of our in-person figures... Oh, no, sorry, total watched hours first. Forgot. Uh, you can see there um, the drop, but the yellow is still quite marked, isn't it? Still a lot of people connecting with our services, even though we're back face-to-face. -face. Next one... This is what, it's look, what it looks like. Now, my apologies for the right graph, which is the live services. Uh, at, for the first few weeks, because we were kind of going back to something we hadn't done since March, counting of um, people in the congregation didn't happen at some of our services. So you'll see for those first few weeks, there's nobody comes to 10 o'clock, whereas most of you will remember that you were one of the nobodies who came. There were definitely people there. Um, what I've tried to do, it's, it's a stacked graph, which means the, um, they're all layered on top of each other to give you an idea of what our total number is, because some people have moved from one congregation to another. And it's the total figure that... Probably the one that is most normative, considering our disappearing services, is those middle weeks there in the live services. You can see roughly where we're sitting now. What that says to me is that there are a few people who have disconnected, who we, do not, we haven't actually uh, got with us where, that we did before. Now, we know about some of those. We've had a, a, a family leave us because of work. Those things happen. Uh, we also know that it has been a very disconnecting time. We can also see a little bit of a shift from one congregation to another. I think those figures give us, tell us two things. One, it's important we ask, are there places where we have dropped the ball? But I think it's also important that we give thanks to God. That after, what was it? Seven months of not meeting together, we're still pretty close to what we were at the beginning. I think that's amazing. 
We could have dropped markedly through that year, but we didn't. And I think that's exciting. Are there any questions on those figures? Okay. Well, I'm, if you're happy, I'm uh, prepared for that, along with my written report and my sermon from the 31st of January to constitute my report. In which case, I'm done. And we move on to the warden's report. I beg your indulgence. It has been a rather wild month for me and a written report was my hope to give out as a supplemental paper but I simply ran out of time to do it so I'm going to subject you to my ugly mug instead. So, first of all, the wardens give thanks to God for 2020 which might seem like a bit of a weird thing to say given that it was a kind of different rough year but it was really inspiring for us as your wardens to see St. John's thrive under very difficult circumstances. I, for one, feel like those of us who are here are more closely bound now than we were at the beginning. I thank God for this family. I also thank God for the staff, for the efforts that Michelle and Peter have made over this last year to serve us to help disciple us, to grow us as his people, and for the work of all of us of con as congregants of this church to glorify him in ministry. Some of the technical stuff of the wardens. Over the course of 2020, the major work that we conducted in this church was the technical upgrades that were required in order for us to continue doing church in the COVID world. And you can see some of the impact of that. This AGM right now is being live streamed. So it's a slightly different world than what we began, but that ended up being our big task for the year. There was also due to be major works conducted on the rectory. However, as the investigations proceeded into that task, it became obvious that an even bigger task was at play. And so instead, that ended up in the creation of a rectory committee. Watch this space. Just to give you guys a little bit of an understanding of a breakdown of what it is that Cheryl, Ross and I have been doing for this last year, all three of us have been doing the general tasks of being wardens, but we've also taken on some slightly more focused work as well. You've seen that with Cheryl taking on quite a bit of the financial elements that the wardens deal with and working quite closely with Lynn. You've seen me taking on some more of the strategic thinking uh, and general work tasks, and Ross has been our go-to man on regulatory compliance. And in 2020, that was a hell of a hat to be dealt. So we thank him immensely for his work in that regard. And since we're on the topic, Ross is leaving the warden team this year. After, I think, seven consecutive years on task, and more than that total, we owe this one of God's servants a great gratitude. He has worked tirelessly for us, and it will be a hell of a hole to fill uh, having him off the team. Given where we are in the AGM, I think I can't say what I was going to say next. <laughs> Probably. Peter thinks, no, I think Peter knows what I was going to say, so what I'm going to say instead is... Are there any questions? I hear, okay. I hear a murmured joke, but not a question. <laughs> All right. I think that's us then. Awesome. I am going to call upon the Treasurer to present our finance report uh, and to uh, then present our budget for 2021. Thank you, Lynn. Right, if you were able to understand anything about nominations and parish councillors and how many we can have and one to two and one to three, you'll find this child's play. <laughs> Pause for a sec. 
Does this work, or do I have to click my fingers? Um, I don't know. Yeah, you've got to click your fingers. fingers. Really? <laughs> okay. All right. I will try. Ah, that worked. <laughs> okay. Um, before we get down to business, I want to say a few thank yous. Firstly, uh, to the faithful volunteers who count the cash uh, for the 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. services and for entering the sums uh, in the register for each service. Thank you very much. Um, I also want to thank John Avery and Hugh Smith for counting it again and taking our offerings to the bank and for letting me know how much is banked. Thank you. My thanks also goes to Cheryl, uh, who fills in for me when I have been unavailable, taking on the complexities of zero. That's our accounting package. It doesn't mean we've got zero in the account. All right. Um, and organizing payment of invoices in my absence. Thank you, Cheryl. Great support. Um, and lastly, a really special thank you to Glenn Mason, who took on the onerous task of bringing our assets up to date. That's everything we've got known. It's now six pages long and has detailed information about how much was paid for it in the first place, its depreciation, and today's value for insurance purposes. And also to Earl, um, who helped uh, him with the listing of the technical stuff and to bring it up to date. Thank you both very much. That's a great job done. Round of applause, everybody. <laughs> right. Um, changes. Uh, excuse me a moment. Yes. Changes um, to the accounts that have actually already been sent out uh, uh, to my report. You know, I have done notes on the uh, report. Uh, on the accounts, sorry, I've done notes on the accounts that were sent out to you electronically earlier in the week. Um, there have been a few questions since then, and um, so we have made, I have made uh, some uh, amendments to that. And thank you for those who raised points and so that I was able to clarify these things. Now I'm going to read them out because it's probably a bit too small for you. Sorry, Lynn, can I just interrupt? Uh, if anybody checked their email this afternoon, they'd have got an up-to-date version with these changes in it. But if, you, if the copy you read was earlier than this afternoon, you will need to take note of these changes. Yes, on the second page of the notes to the audited reports, under job keepers, this is what it now says. The diocese required parishes to apply for JobKeeper's payments towards clergy salaries. These payments freed up income, enabling parish council to increase, increase our parish giving and to set aside a provision for changes to our rectory. You will find this under non-current li liabilities provision for the rectory in the balance sheet. And the second change is under parish giving Besides our normal giving to various missions, particularly to BCA, CMS, and Scripture Union chaplaincy, amounting to 11,400, the Parish Council decided to increase parish giving for the extra income freed up by job keepers by giving 2,500 to Sylvia Jean's program, providing emergency food for refugees during COVID-19 lockdown to Sigur for his work with the Huli people in Papua New Guinea, and Sam McGann feeding stranded international students at Kelvin Grove during COVID-19. 3,000 was also given for RI materials in schools and to increase the community and outreach budget, budget by 2,500. So those are the two changes, and as Peter says, that, that's in your email box um, today this afternoon. Income. This is on the audited reports. I'm not yet speaking to the budget. That will come later. Um, we received during the year, last year, um, a gift for 5,343 to cover the cost of two cameras. 
Yes, that's what it cost. You can see why they're carefully put away after the end of each service, after the 10 aim service. And we're grateful for, to our donor for those, those gifts. Um, we also received a grant from the diocese, 949, to help us buy equipment to broadcast our services live, which was extremely helpful. Our offertory income kept at a steady level, and I'm thankful to those who made it this possible by either giving regularly by electronic transfers or other means. This is really helpful. So we have a steady income each month. Ross Lacey did a great job setting up our cash flow containers account and income from this account is dedicated to going towards Michelle's ministry in the community. And when we come to the budget, you will see the total amount collected last year has been added to her budget for this year. We also received from the Defence Force a, a sum of money uh, to cover expenses when Michelle, our community chaplain, for those who don't know, was deployed to Melbourne to help with the fires. The Parish Council decided that this sum should be set aside to cover emergencies in Michelle's ministry to the community. And again, you'll see this in the balance sheet. JobKeeper. As just explained, St. John's received support towards clergy salaries from May to December from job keepers. This provided an unexpected surplus which enabled the parish council to increase parish giving, details of which are in my written notes, and enabling a provision towards the rectory to be set aside. Expenditure. Couple of points. We had to respond to unexpected costs, like buying hardware and software to put our services online, plus building a new tech desk to accommodate more people and equipment. We have really benefited from the anonymous gift mentioned earlier and the many hours of volunteer work put in by many people. The second, um, point is, say, is the savings that we, we made in the running costs of the church building during closed down, uh, which is reflected in many areas in our expenditure. Overall result. I'd like to emphasize two points about the accounts. If you take out the depreciation, that's the middle bit, shown in the PNL, you will see that the account for 2020 was in fact in surplus by $794. Overshadowing this, the parish council was the looming realization that a large sum of money is needed to be spent on the rectory. And we are so thankful to God that we have been able to make a provision in the balance sheet of uh, 48,000 Towards the, towards the rectory out of our cash assets. And we do thank God for that. Now, before I move the accounts for approval, are there any questions? I would therefore like to move that the accounts for 2020 be approved. Okay, thank you. Now we go on to the draft budget for 2021. Um, <laughs> well, what will happen this year? Who knows? <laughs> if uncertainties will continue, we don't know. Whether, will the mobile towel contracts be signed off? <laughs> we don't know. Uh, when will social distancing end? Will things get worse or better? Psalm 121 says, Our help comes from the Lord. He watches over us and keeps us from all harm. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. So, 
in faith, let's look at our comings and goings this year. Offertory. I have kept the offertory income uh, the same as last year. Um, it has been encouraging to see that many more people are giving uh, by electronic transfers now, or direct, direct debits. And please ask me about how you can do this if you don't already do so. And it can be done completely anonymously if you wish. Tower income, great fun. Um, I have assumed the two mobile tower contracts will eventually be signed off this year. They came up for renewal by way on um, 1st of April last year, and negotiations were opened before then. Um, and if they're signed off this year, we may, will, receive the reduced sum of 98,500 for the three tower contracts compared to 105,000 last year. Currently, Telstra is keeping to monthly payments under the old contract. I, um, which is good news, that's the higher sum. I am assuming that in April, a year on from when it should have been renewed, um, when we would normally receive an annual lump sum from Telstra, we will receive either the new sum, 29,500, or Telstra will pay, as they are doing at the moment, by monthly instalments over 12 months. Now, you can work this out. This would mean we will only receive nine twelfths of that sum this financial year. Are you following me? In the budget, I have taken the pessimistic view that they will only pay the nine twelfths. But note, the longer the parties draw out negotiations and don't sign, uh, the more we receive under the old contract. <laughs> but who knows? We've lost something of the picture, sorry. I believe we will continue to receive payments at the government's reduced rates on, on job keepers from January to, to March. But if you look at the proposed budget, um, I have put the sum in a different column. I know you're all looking at your, your um, budget. Um, so that it is not included in the total sum income that we will receive. This is to show what our normal income without uh, job keepers set against expenditure, expenditure will look like without the addition of job keepers. Okay, so that's why I have done that. Going to expenditure. Um, general running costs. I have calculated running costs as if the church is fully operational, and this could change, of course. Last year we made savings on electricity and blah, blah, blah. Salaries. The dioceses are keeping stipends the same as last year. The parish council has not budgeted for paying for extra help in the office. So again, I'm sure Michelle and Peter would be pleased to receive any volunteer help offered. Parish giving. Now you may be interested to know how parish giving is calculated. We are asked by the diocese each year how much our contribution to the diocese will be. They don't tell us what they want. We tell them. We base our contribution on 10% of last year's offerings, your givings. In addition, we give 10% to missions out of our tower income. The missions who benefit are decided by the parish council each year and normally are CMS, BCA, Scripture Union Chaplaincy at Wishart and Mansfield, RI in schools, and Christians Against Poverty. White envelope giving. Now, I mentioned in my written notes 
that the parish council have decided, uh, at my request, that individual giving is designated in de designated white envelopes um, to BCA and CMS should not go through the church accounts, saving extra accounting work by not using St. John's banking facilities. Instead, the CMS white envelopes will be collected regularly for banking directly into CMS's account. For folk who give to BCA, please, by white envelopes, please can I encourage you to have a BCA box. Currently, Gloria Lacey organizes collecting boxes twice a year and passes the proceeds on to BCA. Just need to ask her for a box and then put your cash into that. That would be so helpful. Community outreach. Not all the money dedicated to outreach and community was spent last year. So it, it has been carried forward to this year's budget. Added to this is the sum collected by Cash for Can scheme. And then the normal budget, uh, which this year has been increased from 1,000 to 2,000. So that makes that total. Profit and loss. The proposed budget shows that there will be a deficit of 13,437 at year end. As mentioned before, JobKeeper payments are not included in this sum to give a truer picture of our position. We have challenges ahead. We realize that. Um, especially as the Parish Council considered the various options for our rectory and as new opportunities open up to reach out to our community as we adapt to COVID. Finally, I want to thank you all for your generosity and continuing support of the ministry at St. John's. And I'd like to move this budget to be approved for 2021. Do we have any discussion? Is there any questions you would like to ask of Lynn? Okay, then I will put the motion. Those in favour say aye. 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 Contrary, no. Unanimously carried. Look at that. Thank you. Now, if we can just return to our agenda for tonight... Slide number two. Uh, so we're continuing to make our way through the, our reports. Um, we've had our budget, so now we, we continue now with the, the rest of the reports that are in our books. What I'm going to encourage you to do, if you've got uh, your notes there or if, you've, uh, if you're one of the few people who managed to get a paper copy, I did plan on putting out more paper copies, but it seems like the photocopier died of boredom during COVID, and it just decided that after it had printed about six copies, it had had enough and wasn't going to print another thing. There are some copies in Michelle's hands. If you would like one, please wave your hand vigorously and you will get one. Um, I did say limited numbers. It turns out the photocopier was going to make me quite correct. Is there another possible another one up here? Oh. Okay. All right. So, as we look at the reports, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the reports, and what I want to invite you to do is if you've got a question of the mover or a comment to make about that report, please make that comment, and we will get the, uh, the report writers up to respond to them. So I will call them through and we begin with the community chaplain's report. Questions or comments? Okay, we move to the prayer ministry report. RI report. I hope you sat down and read long and hard on that one. It was a lengthy report. Hard to write a report after a year of COVID. 
especially when a school is having to do asbestos repairs, wasn't it, Terry? It was asbestos repairs, wasn't it, at the school that meant the cl classrooms were closed? New buildings. New buildings, OK. Did you include it in asbestos? <laughs> of course they did, yes. Uh, home fellowship? Uh, Friday night youth groups, Chaos and Unite? OK. Uh, Sunday school. Can I get us to big, give a big woohoo to Whiskers? Because Whiskers was awesome. <laughs> Maintenance committee. Yeah, yes, please. We replaced two different circuit boards, but yes. Yeah. Um, has there any, anybody approached Aiken to put a cover over those units so we don't have kick over problems? You can't keep paying out the motherboard. Ross, do you want to answer that question? Ro mm -hmm. Ross, it actually helped. Could you come forward to answer the question? Just because we are filming for people. Yeah, come and use the lectern. <laughs> yeah, apparently you have... Yeah, it's just proof that we don't do that holy of holies thing, isn't it? You've got to put your shoes on to come here. OK, yes, to answer your question, we've had, I'd hate to say, how many people advising us on how to stop that. There's been countless suggestions. We've tried some of them. The bloke from the air conditioning people has told me a few times that they know of nothing that is foolproof. They've tried for years and years. What he was going to do on the last um, repair that we had just before Christmas, he was, going, he was going to put some shade cloth inside and wrap it around the, the uh, circuit boards, which he's done elsewhere, which they can say you can't do. He's done it elsewhere, and he said that it has worked for quite a few years on some of them. The, we waited and waited and waited, as the people on this side know, <laughs> for, this, for that circuit board to arrive from, I presume, China. It arrived two days before Christmas. They rang me up and said, we, can we get the bloke out here now to do it? So he said yes, and he came out and did it as a rush job, and he didn't have time to go to Bunnings and get the shade cloth, so that hasn't happened yet, but you got air conditioning for the Christmas service. So next time he comes out to repair something, he will do that, and that's the best idea we've got at the moment. Um, as I said, people have told us to use Vix and camphor and goodness only knows what else. You can't, you can't wrap, yeah, dead old, um, you can't wrap the whole um, Compressor. Yeah, con <laughs> container there in anything because it restricts too much airflow. Um, he's told me that countless times. You must not block the fan in any way. Um, so that's why all that he intends to do is just wrap up the circuit boards as best he can. He can't do that 100% either. So, so let's that, the next time he comes out, it's just for a service and not to replace it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah, and as I said, the only reason he didn't do it was they, they fitted it in because the circuit board arrived two days before Christmas closed down. I think it arrived on the Thursday and they were closing on the Friday and they did a rush job. Otherwise, he would have gone to Bunnings and got it and done it that time. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there somebody here from uh, the uh, committee that's in charge of the lecture? Um, yeah, we, I can... So we've just had a question. Uh, is there somebody from the, com the rectory committee? I should point out the rectory committee are presenting their report on Monday night. So parish council have not yet had a report from the rectory committee. 
So any advice at the moment, it would just be we're thinking, you know, they can answer some questions, but in terms of a, a, a road ahead, that's waiting on the report to come to Parish Council for Parish Council then to review. I'm just thinking about uh, Michelle's health in, in the rectory because this ri rising damp seems to be a big issue. Mm. And from what I've read, it's going to be quite expensive to fix up the rectory. And also, if we don't do it within a reasonable time, we could be fined. Mm. So I can like answer thoughts. all of those. Yes, it is a concern. Yes, we are trying to expedite the solution as quickly as possible, not least of which for Michelle's health. Yes, whatever we do will be expensive. Um, there's not really any getting away from that. And yes, currently the rectory does not meet the proper regulations for habitation, I would imagine. It's certainly not a, it's not good. Yeah. Hmm. If I might, just uh, one thing that Parish Council did do last year is we have said that the rectory is to be resolved in 2021. Um, so we are, we are pushing, the, um, pushing this one pretty hard for that reason. Uh, having said that, there is a lot of work and there is no scenario that is, you know, I think it's safe to say there's no scenario that's less than six figures. Realistically, there's no scenario that's less than six figures, yeah. So we have a rising damp problem. Do we have other issues as well that are that serious? So a lot of the issues uh, functionally with the house, structurally with the house, do tie back to a drainage problem. That's where the rising dampers come from. In terms of an exact description of the state of the house, we have engaged a building inspector to have a look at it. Uh, and. I would hazard a guess that someone like Tony, who's also a member of the Rectory Committee, could give you a better description of each of the major issues. Um, but th there are a number of, of issues. The rising damp is one of. It's certainly one of the most concerning of, but it's not the only one. So the $48,000 that's in the balance sheet... Is a down payment on whatever yep. solution we'd have to make. OK, but should that be higher than 48000 That's what I'm asking. Uh, uh, if, uh, if, <laughs> if you'd like to make a charitable donation... <laughs> yeah, it's like... I'm not I a mean, philanthropist. With <laughs> yeah, 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 as I said uh, at the last rectory committee meeting, if somebody would like to drill for oil in their backyard and find a large supply, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a down payment. There's no solution that's going to come in under 48 grand. So you're going to keep the parishes in... Uh, Absolutely, yeah, on, yes. Yeah, on the, there is a report from the committee going to Parish Council on Monday night, and given the scale of the works that we are doing, I do not imagine for a second that Peter would desire for the church to not know exactly yeah. what the thinking of your leadership was as we continue to move forward with that. You'll be kept appraised. Am I right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, can't, we can't do this, this without everyone huge, together on this. It's huge. This is guys. a big... Uh, question for us. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that. Ooh, I'm dragging the whole lectern with me. Okay. Any other questions on the maintenance report? Okay. Then I move that our reports uh, be approved. What is it? Received. That's the thing we do. We receive reports, don't we? So I move that the reports be received. And I'm moving it from the chair, so I don't even need a seconder. So those in favour? Anybody against? I don't know what you'd do if you're against it. <laughs> Rewrite them? <laughs> I don't know. There you go. All right. We move on to our elections. Um, now, the first one was our church wardens. Um, I hope you've been thinking hard about nominators. Do you know what I might do? Because I think we're going to need to. We're going to have a three-minute stretch break. That's also the opportunity to shoulder tap a couple of people and ask some pertinent questions. Okay? Because you cannot appoint somebody without them agreeing to it. 
just so you know. Why don't you stand, take a stretch break, and then we'll do our... All right. Dave, Dave, Dave. One, two, one, two. There we go. Ladies, gentlemen, anybody else who doesn't fit those, please take a seat. Okay, uh, we come to our uh, church wardens. Now, we said we wanted three wardens. We have two nominations, which is what we require for tonight. So I can actually declare elected Earl Markin and Cheryl Walker. And I have asked if, as my um, appointment to wardens, Peter Baker would uh, take that place, and he has agreed. So can we congratulate those three? Or, or commiserate up to you. Okay, we now come to the fun one. We need some nominations for nominators, because if we don't have nominators nominated, then no nomination can happen. Nominally. Do we have any suggestions for, nomination, for nominators, parish nominators? Chris Boyce, I'm afraid, I think, is actually ineligible because he holds the bishop's licence. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I just say what I... Th I'm going to say very carefully. Um, is there any chance that we could pause the live stream for a second?
Mary and Peter. Are there any other nominations? Then in the absence of any other nominations, we do not need an election, and I declare them appointed. Thank you. There you go, Mary, just what you wanted. <laughs> Mary's going to be outside going, Peter, stop, you're not getting run over by buses. <laughs> Okay, so our next thing is our parish councillors. So we've nominated our nominators. Parish councillors, uh, we have actually received six nominations. We have six people to appoint. Uh, so I declare to be, uh, to be elected. Anne Milton, Jemima Anderson, Lynn Boyce, Ross Miles, Tony Harper, and Steph Harland. Woohoo! Um, congratulations. And Daryl Elwood has agreed to come on to Parish Council as my appointment, or to remain on Parish Council uh, as my appointment. I still have two up my sleeve, which, unlike the, rec uh, unlike the warden which I have to announce today, I'm actually at liberty to not announce them at all, as in not make the appointments if we can... Th those I can do at any time, so... But the warden we have to do straight away, and we've done that. Do you know what that means? We're really near the end. We have one important further uh, uh, appointment to make. Lynn, what would that be? So that's Lynn has moved that Jim Buckman be appointed as parish auditor for 2021. Earl, is that you seconding? Okay, so those in favour say aye. Aye. Contrary, no. Was that no's? <laughs> you need to be very quiet when I say contrary, no. Uh, we ha we're agreed. We have one final motion to move. Uh, if somebody would like to move that the minutes of tonight's meeting be ap uh, approved at the next meeting, ordinary meeting of parish council, they can do so. Anne is vigorously moving that as the minute taker. She's very passionate about that one because alternately she has to stand up the front here and read them to us. So do we have, so Anne has moved that? And do we have a seconder? Cheryl's put her hand up as a seconder. Those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anne and Anne, you can sort it out later. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. That's our AGM. Let me close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness to us here at St John's. We thank you that in a year of turmoil, we have been blessed. We thank you for the large number of people who connected with us over live stream. We thank you for the incredible way that you... Uh, maintained us in both our numbers and in our finances through such turmoil. Our Lord and God, we thank you that you are a good God. We thank you for the incredible gift you give to us in one another. And we want to give a special thanks for those who have been serving us on parish council and have uh, stood down. We thank you for Penny. We thank you for John Avery, for Rebecca Stevens, and we thank you for Jean Stansfield. Lord, we thank you for their service of us. We thank you for uh, Ross Miles and his service as a warden. Lord, you have been so good to us. And we pray that as we go into this year ahead, as we work out what it means to belong, believe, become to be in our community proclaiming Christ, that you would give us the strength, the energy and the drive for the gospel that we can see a world that knows Jesus, for we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And I'll see you tomorrow. In some cases... <laughs>